income and expenses. We generally feel that we're comfortable with what this is, stuff that comes into our business, the money that we make from selling goods, from rendering services, from doing things for people and charging them versus the expenses that go out. But the financials and the financial reporting standards, your IFRS, requires a little bit more from us and we've got to make sure that we understand exactly what this is. These are defined a little differently to our, our assets and liabilities and to some extent they feel a little bit messy for that point of view. So please make sure you're comfortable with exactly how this works and exactly how this is defined because it's going to be a little bit tricky. Income is defined as increases in the economic benefits during the accounting period, either in the form of inflows of assets or decreases of liabilities. It's very clumsy, very ugly. Let's break this down and take a look at what it's saying here. Instead of defining income as you sold something and therefore you have income, I haven't even touched that. What they're saying is take a look at the movements in your assets and liabilities. If your assets have moved up or your liabilities have moved down, that's a good thing. Whatever caused that is income. Okay, so they're saying in the form of inflows of assets for the year during the accounting period, if there are inflows in assets or decreases in liability or increases and your decreases, if you've increased your assets, how did you manage to do that? If you've increased your assets, let's take a look at uh, cash is one of our assets, right? Cash is an asset. If your cash has increased during the year, how, how did you do that? How did you actually manage to increase your cash? Well, chances are you went and bought goods and you paid for them and you sold them for a higher amount than you bought them for and you made a profit and that's how you increased your cash. Or your decreases of liabilities. If you owed someone money last year and you owe them less money this year, how did that happen? How did that actually take place? How did you find the money and where did you find the money to pay for them? Decreases in liabilities. So it's quite a tricky one. The, the def definition of income is not quite as simple as it seems. Instead of saying you're selling something and you're getting money for it, therefore that's income, they're saying watch the movements in your assets and liabilities. If your assets are moving up, that's an increase or your assets are being enhanced, then that's a good thing. And what caused that is probably your income. Your liabilities, if your liabilities have decreased, that's also a good thing and there's a possibility that was caused by income as well. If you look at this though, be careful because there is a possibility you could say, okay, well, what if we increased our, our assets, we increased PPE, remember PPE from study unit two is your property, plants and equipment. We increased PPE, so now are you saying that that's automatically going to be income? Well, not necessarily. What caused the increase in PPE? If the increase in PPE was caused by you taking out a loan from the bank to go and buy that, that means that your liabilities increased as well, which means they both moved in the same direction, which means your asset wasn't caused by anything other than an increase in liabilities. So this one is a little bit tricky. We've got to be careful practically that we can see this. So just think about this again. That results in an increase in equity. Notice that it says it results in an increase in equity and it doesn't say liability, which is exactly what we've just spoken about, right? Your PPE, if your PPE results in an increase in liability, then it's not income. You just took out a loan to buy machinery. So that would not be classified as income. They're saying, take a look at your enhancements of assets that cause an increase in equity, not liability. And we'll explain exactly that relationship now. And this doesn't include equity increases from capital contributions. Capital contributions or equity contributions is where the owners of the business invest more money in the company. That's not income. That's an investment from the owner. Income is not something where the owner is saying, I'm just going to continually put money in the business because that's not going to be income for the business. So although it's a little bit messy, work through it a little bit slower, make sure that you're comfortable with it. But basically what we're saying is if you've increased assets through the year, and you've done so in a way that hasn't created any more liabilities, then the difference between your assets at the beginning of the year and the end of the year must be income. As long as that enhancement or that increase in asset hasn't touched your liabilities and hasn't increased your liabilities. Again, we'll take a look at a practical example just now. Expenses is exactly the opposite. So expenses, they define as decreases in economic benefits during the accounting period, will be in the form of outflows or depletions of assets, so your assets are moving down, or increases of liabilities, the amount of money that you owe is increasing, that results in a decrease in equity. So here we can say um, in terms of your your PPE decreasing maybe, or your cash decreasing, because we're different types of assets, 
So our assets might be decreasing. Let's say our cash decreases. Why would it be decreasing? Well, because I've taken money out of the bank. Uh, what have I taken that money out the bank for? If I took that money out the bank, cash out the bank, to buy PPE, then that means that I have decreased assets and increased assets at the same time, which means it's a net effect of zero and it doesn't touch equity. So we need to be careful about that. I might take PPE out and I might decrease PPE, increase my liabilities. Again, be careful about the relationship here between your assets, your liabilities and your equity. And you'll notice that it always comes back to our basic accounting equation. A little bit ugly, but make sure you get comfortable with it. And we'll get to an example quite soon so we can be quite comfortable with this. Your profit and equity is going to be an important one. Your profit and the relationship between your profit and your equity, very, very, very important. So let's take a look at this. Your profit or your loss is going to be the difference between your income and your expenses. So income minus expenses equals profit. If we take a look at all the increases in assets or decreases in liabilities that result in an increase in equity, and our expenses, which was all the decreases in our assets and the increases in liabilities, that decreased equity, follow that through, gives us our profit. So what you know about profit, income minus expenses equals profit. And if expenses are more than income, then you will make a loss. So you either have a profit or a loss. The question now is how does that impact your equity? And how does our performance because this is your performance, your profit and loss is about the performance. How does your performance affect your position and how do these come together? Because so far, and we've spoken about the fact that your statement of a profit or loss, our statement of profit or loss and our statement of financial position, okay, our statement of financial position and our profit and loss, we've spoken about these two as two separate things. Although for the, the same company, there's got to be some kind of relationship between them what is that? So let's take a look at how these two integrate and how they speak to each other. And we'll do that when we look at an example as well.